Lord. <clears throat> He's always so kind to me. <laughs> and I do have to say, Brother Roy, it's nice to see you. Oh, and please God. tell Colleen that we missed her. I will. Hey, it's good hey. to see you. It's good to be here. I, I know for you it's good to be able to be out, <laughs> from what I understand. Glory to God. I am yes. so excited to be here this morning. Um, yeah. And I only have three pages. <laughs> Front and back of notes. <laughs> <laughs> so we should be out of here by three anyway. <laughs> if I speak fast. That's reduced. No, um, I have a lot that I can say. I, as I told uh, others when, um, I, I guess maybe even, uh, yeah, whatever. Melissa. <laughs> what her name is. <laughs> On the way in, I said, you know, I have so much to say that I could teach for a, a week on this at least and, and just barely cover it. And probably the problem for you would be while I'm teaching it, more revelation would come. So then we could just extend <laughs> <and> just teach <laughs> it. But glory to God, this is a big topic. This And the Lord has been working with me uh, for about a year now. And um, my new motto is biblical strategies for life victory. Yeah. That's, all right. That's my new motto. Every problem has a solution. All right. Every problem has a solution. And so today, you know, it would be nice if I could just expand on the whole thing and get it all to you. We can only uh, manage to learn a little bit at a time. Amen. So we're going to talk about prayer today. And we're going to talk about prayer strategies. I've been uh, at, the, at the conference. I, I've spoken a little bit about what prayer is not. And um, I'm not going to take time to go through all of that just because we don't have time for everything. But I am going to tell you this. Prayer is not talking to God. I say that for impact. Mm -hmm. It worked, right? It worked. Well, but what is Who it? Who am I talking to? <laughs> Prayer is communing Amen. with God. Amen. Yes, that's yes. right. As one minister said, he was praying a mile a minute. <laughs> Lord this and Lord that and Lord that. And he said, I realize that here lies a fool who knows nothing talking to the creator of the universe who knows everything yeah. and I'm doing all the talking. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not too smart. That's right. <laughs> Not too smart. And the truth is we go to God in prayer really not to just ask for everything and not to bemoan our problems and to bewail the situation of the world and to uh, cry out and, uh, and then be able to say, I prayed for a whole hour, or I prayed for 12 hours. It doesn't really matter if you did all the talking, you didn't really That's pray. Right. That's right. All right. I didn't really pray. I only pray when I have come to God and he has communed with me yes. and I have heard his voice. Amen. So maybe we should put that in our arsenal for a new strategy yes, amen. for life victory. So I've, I've shocked you with that information <laughs> that prayer is not talking to God. Uh, there's a whole nother list that I have that prayer is not. But we'll probably touch on some of them as we go through the prayer strategies. But the first question that always has to be asked is, why should we pray? Yes. And um, I can give you some biblical answers. We should pray because God said so. Amen. Jesus said, when you pray, in, yes, in right. Matthew, when you pray, not if you pray. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. He said, when you pray. So he was assuming that you're not going to make it without prayer. Yes. And on and on, the scripture t tells us to pray with all kinds of prayer, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But why do you pray? Mm -hmm. Now, here's a huge lesson in about three or four or five sentences. In the beginning, God created. 
created the heavens and the earth. And then, if you go on down a little bit farther, and he created man. And he gave this earth to man. Yes. Adam and Eve had total control over the earth. And the enemy, now I could go into a lot of uh, understanding of that, you know, where was Satan before and, you know, mm -hmm. who was on the earth before and, you know, on and on. I'm not going to go into all that, but I am going to say the enemy knew that Adam had control. Yes. Adam was God's highest creation, by the way. That's why we're so important to God. We're his highest creation. Adam had control of this earth, and Satan wanted it. That's right. Uh, That's right. Mm -hmm. The only way mm -hmm. that Satan could get it was yep. to wiggle his way and get it, get him, get a man to give it to him. That's right. And he did exactly that. Yes, he did. And there was a period of time, because, you know, he began to doubt God's word, half God said, mm -hmm. you know, really? You think that's the truth? And then, why don't you disobey God? And they did. You know the story. I'm just recapping it quickly. And they did. And in their disobedience, Adam and Eve, and by the way, um, Adam and Eve are just male and female gender of man. Yes. Okay? So when man disobeyed God and did what the Satan suggested, at that moment, everything collapsed for man. Yes. He, he knew he was naked, he was afraid, he had yes. lost his glory. Yes. And Satan had control of this earth. But what happened? What happened? God said, Satan, you, you haven't had the last word. In All Genesis, right. what, 326, or mm -hmm. I think it is 126. I forget the exact verse, but he says, there's coming a time when your head's going to be bruised. You'll bruise his heel, yes. but your He'll head's bruised. Your head. Amen. You're, you're out of it. You're out of it. He'll crush your head. Mm -hmm. And so it happened at the cross. Amen. Jesus yes. came, born of a virgin. I was talking to someone just the other day, and I said, you know, if we can agree, and I, it was so good to hear you say that last night, Morris. If we can agree yeah. that Jesus is the Son of God, yeah. he was born of a virgin, yes. he died on the cross for our sin and went to hell, the Bible says, and rose again, Hallelujah. glory yeah. to God, and, and then set us forth. If we can agree with that, everything else is up for discussion. Amen. 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 Yes. That's what makes you and me a Christian. That's right. Is we believe that message. Yes. Not only do we believe it, it is true. Yes. I will Amen. tell you that. that With confidence, I will tell you that. So if we believe that, we're on the same page. Why pray? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, God knows what we need for that. God knows what we need. That's right. Amen. In that story is the clue. Why pray? Mm. I'm going to say something else that you're going to... <laughs> Just get ready for it. <laughs> God is not in control Amen. of the earth. That's right. That's right. Who is? Man. Man is in control. Because why did Jesus say, all authority has been given unto me, mm -hmm. so send I you. Mm -hmm. Jesus has sent us. He got the authority back. Satan thinks and he's the roaring lion. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. He's the roaring lion who runs around and tries to get you to turn on yourself so he can be in control. Yeah, that's right. Because that's what he has to do. Satan has to get to you yes. to give him authority to do the things that he's done. And yes. he's done such a good job of it over the years, yeah. and we've allowed it. That's but right. now, we know that we are, 
in authority because Jesus gave us that. Yes, he did. So if we want God to move, yes. we have to ask him to. Yes. Hallelujah. So yes, yes, that's yes. why pray. Yeah. And what's exciting to me is you, this is such a deep and a real full subject and so, so <coughs> important in our lives. And we're all used to, I would like to have four easy steps to effective prayer. Anybody would like to have oh, that? Amen. amen. <laughs> sure. Four, even ten. Give me ten. You do this, you I'll do this. Check them all. That's right. You do this to easy prayer, easy prayer answered. It's not that way. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to pursue yeah. this uh, topic. Amen. But I'm, what I'm going to do for you today is give you some things to think about. To give you, God will talk to your heart. There may be a question in your heart or in your mind. And God will just answer that. Now, I've written down here in my notes, and I said, warning. I, I started out, wouldn't you like for every prayer you prayed to be answered? <laughs> Anybody ever prayed a prayer that did not get an answer? Yes. Yes. Matthew, you don't have to tell me. Not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, if we got God's word on every situation, Hallelujah. talk about praying and listening, yes, amen. talking and listening, if we got God's word on every situation, and prayed as he instructed us to pray, that would be the case. Every prayer would be answered. So we've learned some things. We've learned to go to God's word. At least I know that it's God's will to heal. Yeah. So I can pray in faith for healing. Amen. All right. I know it's God's will to save everyone. So I can pray yes. in faith for saving. I want I, I submit to you today that there are spiritual laws that em, are in motion that sometimes we don't know and we don't understand and so we pray and um, we we are we pray contrary to those spiritual laws and we think that God isn't answering our prayer when indeed, the laws are in motion, and he cannot answer our prayer. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I love Sister Pam, and I love Brother Morris. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to pray that God would give them a big boat and a big house, but they don't want that. <laughs> they really want something else. And they're saying, I don't even know this perhaps, and they're saying, Boy, I, I just, I am so glad we don't have to be worried with a boat and a house. <laughs> I am so glad we are free to come and go. We don't have to think about what to do about all that. And I'm praying that God will give that to them. You see, I'm praying amiss. Uh -huh. That's what James talks about. Praying yeah. amiss you have yeah. and you do, don't get it because you pray amiss. I'm praying against A, what they want, and even more important, I'm praying against what they've said. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Because our words have so much effect and so much impact. Mm -hmm. Again, that's another uh, topic. You know a lot about it. We have a lot more to learn about it. But here I want to give you this warning before we start, actually start. <laughs> oh, this is free. <laughs> Isn't that what you said? That's what I said last night. <laughs> Warning. Please do not use this as a cop out. Mm. Saying, well, if God didn't answer this prayer, then it must not have been his will. Mm -hmm. Because that's how men and women over the years have gotten to the point where maybe it's God's will to heal you and maybe it's not God's will to heal you. So we'll pray and we'll see. And if God heals you, then it was his will, and if he didn't heal you, that must be his will too. Oh, no. They've gotten to that point. We've gotten to that point, have we not? We'll even do that. Lord, touch this individual and heal their body. 
and then we say, if it be thy will. Yep. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that Jesus bore our sins, our sicknesses, and our diseases to his cross. Now, I never pray, Lord, if it be your will, will save somebody. Because he, he, he paid the price. That's right. Yeah. So I don't pray, if it be your will, heal him. That's right. That's right. Because he paid the price. Yes, amen. I may pray for healing. There's a lot of things that we need to learn, but um, but we know it's not. We know it's God's will. Right. Yes, amen. Yes, will. right. So don't dare be guilty of saying, I pray my mother died of cancer. Okay, so I'm not all that in a French fry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I I've made more than one mistake, and we all have. My mother passed away of cancer. Granny passed away. Yes. We loved her. Yes, amen. And it was God's will to heal her. Uh, I, I will say right here, one of the questions that comes in people's minds as soon as you say that is, well, how are you going to die if you don't get sick and die? God's well, how about just quit say. breathing? That'll work. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. 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 When it comes time, you'll go. Just die of old age. You know, go to sleep and wake up in heaven. Amen. There's there's ways to get out of here without going sick. That's right. A lot of right. kids don't have to get sick to go to heaven. That's right. That is absolutely right. And so um, I want us to be very careful as we learn these things, not to, and especially the topic that I'm going to talk about today, hearing the voice of God uh, in prayer um, and, and the kinds of prayer that we do, I want you to be very careful not to slip into finding excuses for why it isn't working. Yeah. And one of those is the excuses is, well, it just wasn't God's will. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you something else. Don't say, well, I didn't fast enough. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't live good enough this week. Yeah. Those are not excuses. We need to understand the spiritual laws and the kinds of prayer. And that's what we're going to talk about for a few minutes. Amen. Because the Bible says in Ephesians um, 6.18, I think it is, uh, praying with all kinds of prayer. Yes. Yes. So there is, of course, the prayer of asking. And again, we're talking, we're, we're kind of tying two things together. We're talking about kinds of prayer and we're talking about hearing the Father. Yes. Okay? <clears throat> asking, uh, and James said it. He said, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss, because you ask to consume it on your own lusts or your own desires. Yes. You know, I want to move to Hawaii. <laughs> and so I ask God to open the path and move it and, you know, da-da-da-da. And I haven't heard from him as it his will for me to move to Hawaii. I just want to do it. So I'm going to put all these prayer principles into motion, and I'm going to quote the word. You know, if you ask anything, you know, and we always say according to his will, and we let that go out the window as we're saying it. Yeah. Then, And you believe him, and we can quote all those scriptures, and then the prayer isn't answered it's because we were, we were asking amiss. Yeah. We were asking for things that were not God's will. Yeah. If it's God's will, then we can ask for it in confidence and in faith. Yeah. But if, you know, there's many things that we ask for that are just because we want them. Sure. Right. You know, <laughs> I'm going to hit home here to some grannies and grandpas, and I'm a granny. Lord, bring all my children to live within 20 miles of me Amen. so we can work together in ministry. Granite oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Granite Lord. You sound so <laughs> spiritual. <laughs> aren't, aren't, aren't we, wouldn't we like to be able to pray that in, yes. in yes, existence? Sure, Except yeah. it's not God's will always. That's right. Many That's times right. it's not God's will. We need to Find out what God's will is. Yes. You may be praying, this is honestly the truth, you may be praying for somebody to be healed who is praying, they are praying, to go Lord, home. just take me home. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And you're praying. What? Well, I'm not going to get your answer. Right. And you're praying, Lord, heal them. 
And I see it in your word. It's your word to heal everybody. You died for us at Calvary, and you uh, you took you know you bore our sins and our sicknesses. The Bible says, and by your stripes we're healed. And I believe you're going to heal my cousin, and he or she is home praying. Lord, I've lived a long life. Life is just more than I want to deal with anymore. I want to go to heaven and be with you. Yes, amen. Now, who's going to get their prayer answered? Probably not you. Honestly. <laughs> that's right. Honestly. So that's an, that is an unanswered prayer because it wasn't prayed appropriately. Amen. Sometimes there are, um, th these are examples that I've heard. Um, sometimes somebody will, you know, the words of our mouth are powerful. Yes. Powerful. Yes. And so somebody may be 50, 60 years old, and they have been saying since they were 12, I doubt if I'll live past 60. Mm -hmm. I, I don't expect I'm going to live past 60. I'm not going to make it. All the men in our family die before age 60. And they keep putting those yep. spiritual right. laws, because speaking creates spiritual laws. They put those spiritual laws into motion and then they have a heart attack, and we begin to pray for their healing. God can perform and, and does on occasion, on many occasions. I don't mean to sound disrespectful. God does do miracles. But if we've already transgressed the laws of nature, the laws of the spirit, and we've spoken against it, we're, we're fighting upward battle because guess what? Our battle is not with you and me. That's right. Right? That's right? It's with the spiritual realm. And there's a lot of spiritual things that are already in motion yes. That's right. that we're fighting against. And unless we know it's God's will to fight this battle and he gives us instructions and we do exactly what he, do, what he tells us to do, we're going to find ourselves without a prayer, with a prayer that's not answered because we ask amiss. Does that make sense? That is not because God does not answer prayer. That is not because God has abandoned us. That is not because God doesn't care what's going on. It's because we don't know enough. Yeah, that's right. And and that and I'll, I'll just allude to that too. A lot of times people will say, "I've done everything I know." The problem is you just don't know enough. <laughs> Teach me, Lord. Ask for wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, Come on. it was quoted this morning, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally. And I, the way I say it, I paraphrase the King James Version, and does not criticize. Amen. Upbraideth not is the King James Version. So, um, let's, let's be very conscious of the fact that God does answer prayer. Right. Our position is to get in harmony with him, mm -hmm. and that's what prayer is about, Amen. is getting in harmony with God, we, because he knows so much more than we know. Um, how many of us have said, Lord, I need to get there by such and such a time. Get me there. Mm -hmm. And you can't find your plane ticket. And this goes on, and that goes on. We've heard many, many, many testimonies of people who um, needed to get to work on 9-11. Mm -hmm. And one thing and then another came up, and it was frustrating to them. They didn't get there, and their lives were spared. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you want to get on this plane, and mm -hmm. you can't get on it for some reason. If you, if you are walking with God, he will protect you. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm just saying these are some things for you to think about and for me to think about. We can get every prayer answered, but there's a lot more that we need to be attentive to. Amen. There's a time when it's not time to pray, but it's time to say. This is what, what I have entitled the prayer of requiring. Because the Bible says, 
and when Jesus was teaching them to pray, he said, if you require of me Ooh, yeah, certain yeah. things, but Jesus was not teaching us to go to God and say, look, God, I require this out of yes. you. No, that's disrespectful. That's totally irreverent. No, but there are times, and that's why we have to hear God, when I say, Satan, you get your hands off of my daughter. You set her free to make a choice for Jesus. I bind that bondage. There's a time for that. Yes. Or get your hands off of my finances. Yes. You are trying your best to, to create a problem in my life. And I am telling you right now, get your hands off yes. of my finances. Yes. yes. Amen. But that's not praying. That's saying. Yes, amen. Yes. That's right. Praying is communing with yes. God. Amen. Communing with God, not just talking to him. Yes. Amen. Communing with God. But that's saying. But there comes a time to say. Mm -hmm. And what did Jesus say? Jesus yes. got every prayer answered. Yes, he did. But what did he say? I, I, I say. say. Oh, what my father said. Yes. I only do what my father showed. Yeah. Okay. That's right. I only do what I see my father do, mm -hmm. and I only say what my father <laughs> says. Amen. So we need to go get our prayers, if you will, what we're going to speak forth from the father. There That's what the Holy amen. Spirit does, yes. is teaches us. So we need to do that. Right. Yes, amen. Someone once said, well, we had enough faith we could just go into that hospital and clean it out. <laughs> Jesus uh, no. didn't. No, That's no, right. Didn't. That's right. No, that's Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda. <laughs> yeah. yes. Multitudes. Multitudes of, of, of illnesses. Yep. Yeah. Handicapped people. Ill people. People that were about to die. Uh, skin diseases. Fevers. All, everything you can think of at the pool. Bethesda, and we're talking about a multitude, probably thousands yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. And he goes to one man. That's right. right. Because that's what he heard his father direct him to do. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. I, I remember one time that, um, and I don't even know the result of this, I was at the, um, the fairgrounds in Delaware, and the Lord was, is very real to me. And um, there was a, a young man who was part of the, the circus. We were at the circus for the kids. He was part of the circus, but he was sitting in the, the um, landing when we went down the steps. And he was just sitting back there in the corner, just sitting. <laughs> and uh, people that know me say, Adele, that's not true, but I don't always do this. <laughs> I was going down the step, and I saw that man and I, this is all I said to him, but I know to this day, I mean, this was like 45 years ago, so I, I know to this day, well, I couldn't wait that long because my kids are not that old, 40 years ago. I know to this day that I spoke from God. And all I said to him is, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. And he said, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And that's all I know. I can't wait to get to heaven to yeah. find out how that turned out. But my point is, when you hear God, which she was talking this morning, when you hear God tell you to do something, yes. just do it. Yes, right. amen. Do it. And and He then he will be able to bring his kingdom on this earth yes, if he right. gets to do what he wants to that's do. Right. But we need to uh, give him authority. Yeah. And I gave him authority that day. Yes in that man's life because I said that one thing. And I'm not all that. I'm not talking like I'm that. I'm just using these for examples. There's a time to pray and the, there's a time not to pray and to say. There's a time to be persistent in prayer. Pray without ceasing, it says. Don't even, don't quit, even if it seems you are getting no results. Well, Adele, I asked God once, doesn't it sound like lack of faith if I continue to 
Lord, please, Lord, please. Yes, it does when you say, Lord, please, Lord, please. <laughs> but, um, but there's a time to pray without ceasing. And I, I think it's so, ex uh, so such a good example with the unjust judge. You know, the Bible says when the widow went, she wanted bread. And she was asking God for it or asking the unjust judge for it and asking him. And he was putting her off. And the Bible does not say that God is the unjust judge. He was just using this as a comparison. That if she knew her rights, and she did, and she kept pestering him for that bread, she was going to get it. She knew it, and he knew she wasn't going to quit till she did. So when you've heard from God, when you know your rights, and, and don't, don't misunderstand that um, uh, misapplying the scripture gives you rights. I don't mean that. Remember when I said you're praying amiss because you're praying mm -hmm. for something for somebody and they don't want it? Yep. That doesn't give you rights. But when you know you are in within your rights, if it's your body, if it's where you have authority, and you know you're within your rights, you just keep pursuing in that prayer. Yes, amen. Praying for salvation for your children? Yep, keep praying. Keep praying. Yep. Here's, a, here's a, an idea. What does the Bible say? doesn't say, keep saying, Lord, save my children. Lord, save my children. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into the field. And pray that God would send people to influence your children. Pray that they would uh, find themselves in positions where people are, are reaching out to them. Even at that point, let me say this, even at that point, your children have a will of yes, their that's own. Right. That's true. And you cannot transgress that will. Yep. God will not transgress that will. Mm -hmm. But you can continue to pray in authority that they have an opportunity over and over and over again mm -hmm. to yes, accept yes. Jesus into their hearts. That's right. You can ask God for all the, the environment around them yes, to right. bring them to him. My sister was praying one time for her children. Be careful of this. She was praying one time for her children, and she prayed, Lord, I want them saved. I don't care. Now, listen to this prayer and how awful it is, really. But she said, I don't care what you have to do. I don't care if they have to have an accident, if oh. they have to get a sickness. I don't care if, if trouble has to come their way. Bring them to the Lord. And the Lord said to her, don't you think my love is strong enough to draw them? Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> so don't pray that God will beat your children down or your friend or your spouse or anybody to, um, to win them to him. His love is strong enough to win them. Yes, amen. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into the harvest. Amen. And by the same token, it's your responsibility and my responsibility to be the harvester yes. for somebody else that's praying. Yes. Amen. There may be somebody out there that you can reach that their mom and daddy or grandma and grandpa, cousin, whatever is praying for that they wouldn't listen to their family member to save their neck. But if you reach out in love, mm -hmm. you may reach them. Yes. And I say, Lord, use me for that. Yes, Lord. And yes. I, that, that seed I'm planting so that my family, therefore, will have the harvesters out there that will bring them to the kingdom mm -hmm. and the opportunity to receive you. Amen. Amen. Prayer and fasting. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not completely exhausting any of these topics. Please understand that. So if you, if the Lord teaches you something else about that, just know that there is more to learn. Yeah. Praise God.
Fasting does not give us power. You know, if I fast 40 days, God's going to be really pleased with me, and then he's going to answer my prayer. Fasting does not give us power. Fasting does not change God. God doesn't say, well, you want it so bad, and I see you've, you've done penance by fasting, and so now I'm going to give it to you. No, fasting changes us. That's right. That's right. Fasting humbles us. Amen. Fasting opens up our understanding to hear God. God will teach you how to pray yes. in your situation for whatever it is that you need. But but we have to hear it. Yes. What good is it for him to tell us what to do if... Um, if we, if we don't even hear it. And we still go out and do what we think is best. Right. What we think is best is not always good. Yeah. Fasting and prayer. We need the Spirit's help. And I was going to give you an example of this. Um, I learned this some years ago. I was uh, ministering in a small church there in, in Wyoming. And um, people are people need. They have needs. I mean, so many people are hurting, and, and they have needs. And many times when I would minister, they would bring uh, a line up at the altar and ask me to pray for them. Because when you've ministered the word, the anointing is on you, and that's often effective. I learned a long time ago, you just don't go down that uh, that row and you just lay hands on people and, you know, whatnot. And when I, I prayed for each one, I, I've learned to just stop for a minute and let the Spirit minister. And what I have found, what comes out of my mouth and the prayer that comes out of my mouth is so, it's not, Lord, bless this one, bless this one, bless this one. It's so purposeful and so pointed into their need that that it, it amazes me. I, I even had to ask the pastor once, I said, was that prayer even sensible? She said, Adele, you hit right on. Not because I was doing it, but because I was listening to God, and he directed me. So when we say you need the Spirit's help, absolutely we need. Yes, we're yes. talking about the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and all of that. Because the Bible says you, you sometimes you don't know how to pray, and so you ask the Holy Spirit to help you. But it's not always that uh, that phenomenon of the gift of the Spirit operating. Mm -hmm. This the the um, and it is a phenomenon, and it is the gift of the Spirit. But it's more obvious. Uh, when it's when it's that type of demonstration, but it's just as real and just as effective. Yes. You know, have you ever prayed for your children? And what they really think they need is a new car. Mm -hmm. uh. But what you find in prayer is they need help with a relationship, Amen. so that God can heal them, so that they can be ready for a new car. There's always a core issue, and it's not always the obvious. Lord, you know, isn't that, it, haven't we found that to be true? Isn't it fun to grow up, Mars? Yeah. <laughs> Years ago, we thought we had, I thought, I shouldn't speak for you, I thought I had it all figured out, and every week, every year, I'm learning more. <laughs> here, here. I think... I'm just looking here if there's anything that I just can't not say. <laughs> I think that's, um, that's that's pretty much covered everything, oh, an overview. There's lots to be said about prayer. Amen. And then I want to uh, give you just a, a quick synopsis of, a, of a, another warning or another uh, caution, cautionary thing. We've had a great week. Yes, amen. We've had a great weekend. We've learned great things from God. I've learned great things from God. You've learned great things from amen. God. And we're aren't you ready to go? Well, guess what? You still and I still have not totally formulated what God's plan is for us. We have new information. 
but we don't have the whole plan. That's right. So as we go out there, our enemy is going to attack us. Yeah. And when he does, whatever it is, whether it's discouragement, whether it's um, complacency, whether it's a problem of some serious description, whatever it is, he's going to do his best to distract us from what we've learned and to thwart God's plan. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. I want to give you an example in Scripture. What you'll probably tend to do that uh, we want to be cautious, of, be cautious about. Peter denied Jesus. Mm -hmm. God's whole plan for mankind was wrapped up in that story. I mean, God was taking uh, mankind down with the law and, and, and all that they learned and the prophets, and then all of a sudden, at the cross, he made a complete right turn. And, and life was going to be different. Born again experience was not anything they understood. Um, the church growing was nothing they understood. The Pharisees thought they had the word of God and that's all there was ever going to be. This was a complete change. And right at the door, Peter failed miserably. Yes. Yes. He failed miserably. He denied Jesus. And then Jesus died. And Peter said at one point in that period of time, um, after, after this whole change in God's dealing with mankind had taken place, Peter said, I'm going to fish him. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Why? Because that's what he knew. That's what he knew. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's what he was familiar with. Yep. That's where he felt like he had some measure of success. Mm -hmm. That's where he had even seen some of God's miracles. That's right, amen. Yep. That's where it all started for Peter. All the and and God was pushing him and pushing him out of his comfort zone yes. into a into an area in oh glory to God Holy into a God. realm that Peter had no idea that he was going to stand yes. up mm -hmm. on the day of Pentecost That's and right. give mm -hmm. that powerful sermon. He had no idea. God's plans, yes, right. and God was pushing him and pushing him and pushing him, and he felt so disoriented mm -hmm. and so lost, and he didn't know what, so what was he going to do? Go he was going to go back and build a Sunday school. Mm -hmm. He was going to go back and have a camp meeting, uh, mm -hmm. right? That's right. These, are, these are things we remember. Yep. The Lord told me many years ago, I think I've shared this with you, I was just longing for the good old days uh -huh. when the Lord was just blessing us and the Lord told me then, you can't go back. Yes, it is. And for Peter, there was no going back. That's right. And for you, yes. there's no going Hallelujah. back. You may not know where you're going. You may become disoriented. You may become discouraged. You may remember the good old days when you could at least accomplish this or accomplish that mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God, and all of a sudden, you don't even know the rules anymore. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen? But you can't go back. Yes. God told me another another time. This was such a, such a revelation. He said, you're going into uncharted territories. Yes. But don't worry. I've been there. That's what I'm telling you this morning. You're leaving here. You're going into uncharted territories. But don't worry. God's there. Amen. And you can't go back. We have passed the point of no return. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Well, folks, if you will listen carefully to what you've heard today and follow, 
you are going to find yourself more effective in prayer. Amen. 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 Praise God. Would you stand with me today?